Songs of Rural America on RFD TV, Rural America's most important network. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Jonathan. Sitting on a creepy old rocking chair They say it's gonna rain, but we don't care I'm dancing with you all afternoon On the front porch with me Waving to my neighbors as they're passing by I'm Cooking up some chicken, bacon, apple pie a Pretty as a rain cloud in the sky On the front porch with me the rhythm of a summer rain tapping out a tempo on my window pane nothing like summer on a front porch swing making my banjo ring i'm playing my banjo on a rocking chair you can play your fiddle in your underwear just a pretty as a rain cloud in your hair on the front porch with me of a summer rain tapping out a tempo on my window pane nothing like summer on a front porch swing making my banjo ring i'm playing my banjo on a rocking chair they say it's gonna rain but baby we don't care i'm dancing with you all afternoon on the front porch with me when you're on the front porch with me when you're on the front porch Thank you so much and welcome to Songs of Rural America. You know, nothing in this country shaped communities and cultures and generations more than the American automobile. And so in celebration of America's love for the automobile, here's a song called Cars. Don't sing about cars no more Cool cars died in the oil wars It really doesn't sound very sexy to say I drive a little four-cylinder A Chevrolet man Nobody sings about cars anymore I got a little Toyota And it goes really far It's a little itty bitty teeny weeny car It's a fuel efficient Automobile made of a whole lot of plastic and not much steel. Nobody sings about cars anymore. A little 
little Subaru. A steering wheel might castrate you. A tiny backseat, I am told, is automatic birth control. Corvette Mustang, four on the floor. Suit the Camaro, Hemi engine, two door. It's a roomy a cylinder convertible dream. Slip into a car today, you're busting up your spleen, man. Nobody sings about cars anymore. about cars no more cool cars died in the oil wars it really doesn't sound very sexy to say i drive a little four-cylinder chevrolet Songs of Rural America, the symphony concert, is presented in part by... think that playing the banjo is hard. When I started building banjos, I thought that was hard too. Yet with some practice, persistence, and dedication, you would be amazed at what is possible. You don't need to be a virtuoso to make magic with music, but you will need the right tools. Our Good Time Banjo is the perfect tool to inspire you for years to come, and they're made right here in the USA. Play music and play the banjo. Michael, Jonathan and I agree on something, and that's that music is a very important part of our lives. 31 years ago, I had a vision about starting a professional orchestra in this area. Even though it's a very small town, I thought that everybody would agree that music was important, and they did. And we found this wonderful opera house that we've restored and put back into operation, and it's actually a magnificent instrument itself, and we designed the orchestra around it. So the Ohio Valley Symphony now plays in the Ariel Opera House as its clinical. Certainly uh, one of the things that shaped the uh, history of, of our country is war. And in 1951, a young Canadian saw the world just uh, inundated with a massive bloodbath. Millions and millions of folks lost their lives. Hitler had, had uh, destroyed the lives of so many millions in Europe. Others had died of an influenza. Uh, and, and here this war had just ravaged the earth, World War II. And then by 1951, here uh, America was heading into yet another war in uh, the Koreas. And he just couldn't believe that. And so what he did is right, even though he was a Canadian, he wrote uh, probably one of the world's most uh, beloved peace songs. He didn't write an anti-war song. It was a song about peace. And uh, so this song, uh, written by Ed McCurdy, I think belongs with the songs of rural America. Last night I had a strange dream I had a dream before I dreamed I saw The world agree To put an end to war I dreamed I saw This mighty room And the rooms filled with men and women And the paper they were Signing said they'd never fight again. Oh, in 
Well, they all joined hands and they bowed their heads in grateful words they prayed. And the people in the streets below, where they were dancing around. scattered on the ground Oh, last night I had the strangest dream I ever dreamed before I dreamed I saw the world agree to put in He was just 21 years old, and he had recorded 60 songs in 18 months. And he had no idea that in eight, that 18 months he would change the trajectory of not just popular music, but the music of young people all over the world. But he was just 21 years old. Two weeks earlier, he had a big old argument with his manager, had to fire his band, and so he reached back into his uh, hometown of Texas in Texas, and he hired a 19-year-old kid that did not know how to play the bass. And so the kid had two weeks to learn how to play the bass, and on a cold winter night when everybody had the flu and the sniffles and they had laundry to do, and they just didn't feel like getting in that ice-cold bus with no heater and having to drive all night long, they decided to lease a little airplane, and there was just enough room for everybody on that plane, except for the 19-year-old new bass player, who was very upset. He did not want to get in that bus that didn't have any heat or anything. And so they were getting ready to leave, and the uh, singer was in the airplane getting ready to shut the door on the tarmac, and Buddy Holly looked down at his 19-year-old bass player and said, I hope you don't freeze to death on that bus. And the 19-year-old bass player, a kid named Waylon Jennings looked up at Buddy Holly and said, I hope your plane don't crash. <laughs> That's the last thing that uh, Waylon Jennings ever said to Buddy Holly, and it haunted him for the rest of his life. But because Buddy Holly had such an effect on music, especially young people in the 1950s and, and 60s, even today, we thought we'd include a the last song that Buddy Holly recorded before getting on that plane on that cold February night. There you go, baby. Here am I, well, you left me here so I can Cry well, golly gee, what have you done to me? And I guess it doesn't matter anymore. Do you remember, baby, last September, how you held me tight each and every night? Well,
you go your way, I'll go mine, now and forever till the end of time, I'll find somebody new, baby, we'll say we're through, and you can spell Michael, if you can spell Jonathan, if you can spell Symphony, you can get your own copy of Songs of Rural America compact disc. MichaelJonathan.com slash symphony. I want to give a special recognition to the uh, fellow that helped make all these uh, string arrangements possible. His name is Joshua Carter, and he's sitting here tonight. If you can give him a round of welcome, Joshua Carter. One of the neat things about the history of the front porch is that it taught people how to listen to each other, and people just don't listen to each other anymore. There's so much arguing and strife and people yelling at each other, and you turn on the news. Well, they used to be a news channel, but they, they, it's one person telling you what happened and then five people arguing about it, and they're yelling over top of each other, and it's just crazy out there. And Reminds me of the story of the little old man and little old woman sitting on their front porch watching the sun go down the way a little old husband and a little old wife would do. And they're sitting there and the sun's going down. All of a sudden, the wife sits bolt upright and her eyebrows go shooting up in her forehead. And she grabs her, her walking stick and she whacks her husband over the knee. Well, what you hit me for? He cried out. She goes, that's for all those years of bad sex. Well, he's all humiliated and embarrassed and angry and stuff, just pouting, and all of a sudden his eyebrows shoot up in his forehead, and he sits bolt upright, and he grabs his walking stick, and he whacks his wife over the knee. Well, what you hit me for, she cried out. That's for knowing the difference. <laughs> yeah. So the way we listen to each other is important. Here's a song about slowing down, calming down, and listening to each other. It's called Autumn Song. So sing to me, softly and please speak to me, so patiently, for your words can feel like autumn leaves, when they're falling gently, my dear.
Songs of Rural America on RFD TV, Rural America's most important network. Appalachia plays a, such an important role in what happens to uh, others around the country, even though Appalachia is sort of a very neglected or assumed neglected part. It is a very powerful part of America's image of itself. It is the grand pick yourself up by your own bootstraps, log cabin dwelling, make it on your own independent spirit that made America what it is today. And I grew up in New York. Please don't hold that against me. <laughs> I moved south a long time ago. All my children were born in Kentucky, but when I left New York, I, I went into a little hamlet in East Kentucky, in the mountains of East Kentucky, a little place called Mousy, Kentucky. M-O-U-S-I-E, Mousy, Kentucky. It was two mountains away from Mini, Kentucky. I would go um, up and down the hollers with my guitar and banjo, and I'd knock on doors, and I had hundreds of front porch hootenannies for a couple of years, and people would pull out their fiddles and their mandolins, and we'd sit on that front porch with the grandest stage ever in history, is somebody's front porch with music on it. And this is a song that I discovered while doing those travels up and down the mountains, written by a friend of mine named Sai Khan, but it's about how the the, the older generation has such important tradition and passion for their history and their names and their homes and their families and how the young people are just not interested in that. They're in the tornado of their young lives. So the songwriter hopes that although the love for the past is gone, the songwriter hopes it'll rise again in the hearts of these young people. When I recorded this song, I couldn't think of anybody better to represent the passion and dignity of the older generation than a, a singer named Odetta. And she recorded with me. And I couldn't think of anybody better to represent the shallow materialistic narcissism of the younger folks than myself. So <laughs> it's a beautiful song, Gone Gonna Rise Again, we call it New Wood. I remember the year when my granddaddy died And we dug his grave on a mountainside I was too young to understand the way he felt all about the land But I could read his history in his hand He said, gone, come to rise again There's corn in the crib and apples in the bin Hay in the loft, cotton in the gin now gone There's ham in the smokehouse, hogs in the trough You know he never had a lot But he worked like a mule for the little that he got He said, gone, go to rise again So I'm sitting on a ridge high above this farm And I'm thinking of my people that have moved on now gone 
You're like a tree that grows from the mountain ground You know the storms of life cut you down But the new wood springs from the roots underground Gone, gonna rise again I said the new wood springs from the roots underground Gone, gonna rise In 1934, he had an idea, a dangerous idea in America that shook so many people in the artist community to the core. He wanted to do an opera about black people. He wanted to do an opera about African Americans that would star African Americans. Never been done before. 1934, he, he wrote this thing and they performed it and it failed. It died and a few months later, he passed away. It took until the 1970s, until the Houston Opera Company rediscovered this amazing opera that nobody was performing about African Americans. And now it's one of the most performed operas in American music history. And yet when it was first performed, it was panned, it was turned away, it was a fantastic failure and George Gershwin was heartbroken of it and he died a few months later just immersed in the failure of what he thought would be one of his most adventurous and brilliant operas and so I'm gonna sing you a aria from that famous opera that he wrote called Porgy and Bess Summertime, when the living is easy, all the fish are jumping, and the cotton is high. Your daddy's rich, and your mom's good looking. So hush, little baby, now, don't you cry. Time. 
Let's all sing with Melissa, ready? All together. Summertime. One of my favorite stories is the story of Woody Guthrie and how he wrote This Land is Your Land, and you probably never heard before. Woody Guthrie was living in New York City at the height of World War II, and he was offered a job to do documentary uh, songs uh, in the Pacific Northwest. They were building a big dam out there, and they wanted him to write some songs for this dam, and so he traveled from New York City to the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> And uh, when he got done, tried to make his way back to New York City, he had to sell his car, he had to sell his guitar to get there, and he made it as far as Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and all of a sudden there was this big ice storm, and he's hitchhiking along the side of the road, he gets caught in this ice storm, this is true, he almost dies of hypothermia on the side of this road, and if it wasn't for the kindness of a Pennsylvania ranger who found Woody Guthrie on the side of the road, almost freezing to death, brings him home, gives him hot clam soup, warms him up, and money for a bus ticket back to New York. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. But the big song of the day was by Irving Berlin, a song called God Bless America. And Woody hated that song. He <laughs> hated that song with a passion because he felt it was making fun of the poor people in America at a time when, when he was like looking at the world that was going on. He was like the world was at war and there's this massive global economic meltdown and hundreds of thousands of families are being displaced. All these able-bodied men are on soup lines all over the country in the Midwest where he was from, climatic changes. Were, were causing this big dust bowl and thousands of families were fleeing to California for jobs promised that weren't even there. This was the America that Woody Guthrie knew and that's why he did not like Irving Berlin's song as it was sung by a very operatic singer named Kate Smith. So he wrote an anti-Irving Berlin, anti-God bless America song that expressed his viewpoint about what America was really like based on, ready for this, his communist opinions. Woody was a communist at a time when communism was just another American party. It wasn't Russian or anything, but, but he wrote this song that was based on, on his point of view of what America should be like, what people should be like, put it in a book, and because he got sick, he never got to perform this song live. Seven years later, Pete Seeger finds this in one of Woody's notebooks, and he says, well, Woody, what is this? And so Woody kind of mumbles the song to him, and Pete really liked it, and he started thinking he might sing it, but he told Woody, he says, I, I don't, really don't like the title. That's so passe, and it's negative and stuff. You know, you should change the title. So Woody took a pencil and drew a line through the original title and wrote in the new title of his Irving Berlin anti-God bless America song based on his communist viewpoints, and he called it, This Land is Your Land. If you listen to the words, this land is your land, this land is 
my land and we all share it together based on his viewpoint. What the, was really amazing is Pete Seeger started singing it and Peter, Paul, and Mary started singing it and the Kingston Trio started singing it and Judy Collins and all these songwriters started singing it. It became one of the most popular folk songs in America in the 1950s and school children all over the country were singing this This Land is Your Land communist viewpoint song of Woody Guthrie at the height of the height of Senator Joe McCarthy bringing all the communists to court in, in, the, in the Senate and doing that anti-American thing and everything. And here they were singing this big old communist song in the schools, and they didn't even know it. And what was really funny, the Senate entertained a motion to replace the Star Spangled Banner with Woody Guthrie's anti-Irving Berlin God Bless America song because, well, it was so much easier to sing. So anyway, I decided to write an opera, a full, full symphony opera about the day Woody Guthrie wrote this famous song. And at the end of, of act one of this opera called uh, uh, Woody the Ballad, the uh, Woody for the People it's called. And at the end of act one, um, the Pennsylvania Ranger and Woody Guthrie and Pete Seeger and Paul Robeson are in this cafe after they kind of rescue Woody from the ice storm and stuff and that song comes on the radio and Woody gets incensed about this song and Paul Robinson will, says, well, why don't you like this song? And, and Woody says, I do not believe that song. And Pete Seeger looks at Woody Guthrie and says, what do you believe? And this is Woody's response in the opera about this land is your land. And I believe in the truth I believe there's a moment When all that is good Comes shining all through And I believe in transitions Sometimes change can be good it's the steady confusion of life that transforms us from old into new. And I believe nothing could be so fine as love and forgiveness and mercy.
something very, very precious and very, very wonderful as a rural community to have, have an arts community and a theater, a home base for that. You have people willing to, to, to donate their time and their heart and their spirit to make art and, and music something possible in your hometown. And yet what you have here is beautiful, three-dimensional, real, organic art and music. And you have this in your hometown. And so many communities do not have that. So many communities do not appreciate what their hometown artists and musicians try to do. And I'm going to tell you the story of one of the most saddest artist suck stories I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> He loved to paint. He loved to draw. He was prolific at it. He couldn't stop himself. The problem was he wasn't very good. Most of the artists around him didn't want to hang around him in case his suckness wore off on them. <laughs> no gallery owner in his lifetime, not a single gallery owner ever hung a picture, a painting, a drawing by this guy. Today, He's one of the most revered artists in all of history. He is the most copied, the most famous, the most duplicated, the most influential of all the painters ever, and yet when he was alive, nobody even ever bought a painting from him. And I, I personally find great comfort in his story. <laughs> you might leave here tonight thinking, well, Michael Jonathan kind of sucks. And that's okay, because I know that someday people are going to line up two and three city blocks <laughs> just to gaze upon the covers of the books and CDs you did not buy tonight. <laughs> but seriously, to every artist, every one of you is an artist. So to all of you, we thank you. We thank you for being part of our front porch. And for this, we uh, end our concert with this amazing song, about an amazing artist that nobody appreciated until he was long, long gone. When the stars of all creation shine down on mankind's eyes And the strands of all things living spin a tapestry of night The hands of the human shine down as golden light to be hung from the skyline on a cold and lonely night starry starry nights paint your palette blue and gray look out on a summer's day with eyes that watch the world and can't forget Like shadows on the hill Sketch the trees and daffodils Catch the breeze and winter chill In colors on the snowy linen line Now I understand What you tried to say to me struggle for your sanity and how you tried to set them free they would not listen they did not know how perhaps they'll listen now starry starry nights flaming flowers brightly blaze swirling clouds and violet haze in Vincent's eyes of China blue and colors changing hue Morning fields of amber grain Weathered faces lined in pain Are soothed beneath this artist's loving hands Oh now I understand To try them free. They would not listen. They did not know how. Perhaps they'll listen now. 
for they could not love you and still spell Michael, if you can spell Jonathan, if you can spell Symphony, you can get your own copy of Songs of Rural America compact disc. MichaelJonathan.com slash symphony. You may think that playing the banjo is hard. When I started building banjos, I thought that was hard too. Yet with some practice, persistence, and dedication, you would be amazed at what is possible. You don't need to be a virtuoso to make magic with music, but you will need the right tools. Our Good Time Banjo is the perfect tool to inspire you for years to come, and they're made right here in the USA. Play music and play the banjo. <laughs> 